health has to be part of our every day. And we aren't taught that, right? We learn how to brush our teeth. We learn how to tie our shoes. We teach kids to read and write. We do not teach anyone how to take care of their bodies and generate health. And then we sit here and we wonder, why is our population so sick? Why does everybody feel so tired and anxious and burned out? Hello friends, Dr. Motley here and welcome to the Dr. Josh Axe podcast. And today we have a great guest, a very fortunate event where we can talk to Dr. Robin Burzin of the Parsley Health Virtual Consult, the clinics that are in LA and in New York City. You have, man, you have a far reach with what you're doing. And first of all, I wanna say it's so great to meet you. I'm so glad that Dr. Axe gave me the pleasure. He wanted me to give you his best. He said, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. And we're going to start off and we're just going to talk about everything you do. But thank you again for joining me. Oh, well, it is an honor to meet you and it is an honor to be here. So thank you for having me. Oh, I appreciate it. So I have been going over your social media platform. We've been going over um, the website, been going over the things that you have been going like have going on. And just want to talk a bit more for the audience about what you are doing, where you, what's your background. But could you give us in your own words, your background, but what you represent. You're the CEO of Parsley Health. And what does Parsley Health do for the community? I am the CEO of Parsley Health. I'm also a mom of two and one more on the way. Um, I'm a doctor trained here in New York City where I live. And I created Parsley Health because we needed a better platform and medical service of people with chronic illness. So at Parsley Health, we are chronic disease specialists and we bring holistic medicine to people everywhere across the country online to help them really beat and better address some of today's top health issues like gastrointestinal issues, hormone imbalances, infertility, mental and emotional health issues, autoimmune conditions. Uh, and we treat all of that online and are really designed to help people get better. Mm. And so yeah. when you had this, like you were trained at Columbia and also went to, uh, you went to medical school in the Northeast. Uh, you know, I've had friends that go to Columbia. When you started, yeah. like when you first got out of school, did you go right into private practice? And then when you were in private practice, you saw the need apparently like with the pandemic did you start the virtual consulting and the virtual platform um, right after you started private practice or how did that come to mind or was of course COVID hit and it inspired you but what was the process yeah so when i was in training at columbia and mount sinai hospital so all here in new york mm -hmm. you know i saw in my training and especially in our primary care system how Everything was very fast. It was very transactional. You had 15 minutes with a doctor. He handed you a stack of prescriptions, walked you out the door, and that was kind of it. And yet 80% of the diseases that we deal with today can really be improved, sometimes resolved with food, with changing our lifestyle, with how we move, how we manage stress, how we sleep. And yet those things weren't making it to the prescription pad. And so back in 2016, I decided to see if we could bring the form of medicine that I know that you are very interested in and practice the forms of medicine that Dr. Axe practices uh, and many others, a more holistic view of health to the world through clinics and through telehealth. So we were actually doing video consults since 2016. So nothing wow. to do with the pandemic. And we actually launched our national platform for telehealth and visits um, at the beginning of 2020, having no idea what was coming. So, you know, we believe that telehealth is just like you talk to your family member on FaceTime, you should be able to talk to your doctor. And we've always felt that way. And I'm just glad that now one of the, you know, few silver linings of this experience we've all been through is that now I think everyone in medicine is embracing that. And it's easier than ever to talk to a doctor via video. That is to me, when I first got into the idea of like doing a virtual consult, I didn't know what that would encompass like when I came into practice, but much more now individuals are more comfortable with their doctors if the doctor cares. And, and I mean, they actually know that the doctor cares. When you say that 15 minutes uh, for each patient, um, when you were in school, when you got out of school, when you're in practice and uh, you wanted to shift that mindset that you say you're more of a holistic standpoint, um, I appreciate that. Guys, you guys got to check out all her feeds, all her stories, all her website, because it, to me, it's not just um, one sided. It's not a reductionist uh, viewpoint. I believe every se section of medic medicine has its place. I think that whenever when I see yours, I appreciate the holistic aspect because you can see things that you incorporate 
even on the spiritual side, the emotional, the biochemical side. With all that to say, when you're putting um, your platform together, um, was it something that holistic was always in your mindset when you were in school or what or what steered you to that kind of mindset? You know, I went into medical school as crazy as this sounds already interested in a more integrative holistic approach to health. When I was in college, my grandmother was dying of colon cancer. And at that time, uh, I learned through actually taking a course in college on cancer that, you know, 50% of all cancer is preventable. And that in my grandmother's case, her sad standard American diet, sad, there's, there's, you know, not a mistake there. And I think, um, and her history of smoking along with really poor preventive care, she had not gotten a colonoscopy in time, which is a life, as you know, life-saving, potentially life-saving screening. Mm -hmm. That combination of things had led to her dying, uh, in her early seventies of colon cancer rather unnecessarily. And so what, that sparked in me even early on before I ever even knew I would become a doctor yeah. was just this interest in saying, why are we so reductionist to use your word or, or reductive when we think about medicine? Prescription drugs are essential and colonoscopies can be life-saving. We need a more proactive approach to health. We also need to make sure that diet and the way that we move and the way that we treat our bodies is accounted for in medicine because 99% of our health is happening not when you're in the doctor's office. It's happening mm -hmm. in your life. And we have a lot of power that medicine hasn't handed to us, but that we have to control and to shape uh, what our health outcomes are. And I feel like that should be something people should know. And I, it's really evident when you uh, look at the information that you put out there, the writings you have. Um, one thing that I really loved um, researching with Parsley Health and uh, the avenue you take with all the protocols. Guys, it's amazing how many protocols that she has with um, her doctors in clinic that deal with autoimmune and gut health, those that deal with, uh, they say, the really bad chronic diseases. And Doc, whenever you um, put those protocols together and you see that holistic standpoint together, was it a natural um, progression when you were out in this world and you started to put, and you already had Parsley going with virtuals, that to attract the right people with this holistic mindset to come to your clinic and work with you? Was it, was it a, a natural thing, like the energies came together for you? Well, you know, I, I was, I felt inspired and called to bring holistic medicine to the world. Mm -hmm. And what I saw that I wanted to do was say, Hey, we want to prescribe drugs. We want to do advanced testing. We want the best of conventional medicine. And we want to bring that together and expand it with holistic medicine. So what I saw a lot of out in the world was either a very conventional approach like I described the 15 minute visits, the stack of prescriptions, referrals to specialists, that's a very sort of conventional approach or totally the flip side, right? Sort of natural or the highway. Yeah. And I said, why should we have to choose? Why can't we bring together top board certified physicians and nurse practitioners, really highly trained medical professionals, train them in this more what we call functional or holistic approach mm -hmm. and have them learn how to do more advanced testing how to prescribe a nutrition protocol for a particular condition, like a gut health issue, mm -hmm. how to identify if a food allergy is causing somebody's asthma. Why don't we bring all of that together and why don't we support it through technology that makes it easy to access online? And so that was kind of my guiding force when I started Parsley. So it's not that holistic came later. I would say holistic was the, re the why mm -hmm. and Parsley is really just a platform to bring this form of medicine to as many people as possible. And that's amazing because I think that, um, do you find that when patients come into the office that the avenue of having modern tests also integrated with, you say, you know, classical medicine, modern medicine, holistic medicine, people, they heal quicker, they heal faster when they realize that you have eyes in every, like many eyes looking at the same problem. And um, I appreciate that because uh, many times when I've learned over the years when patients come into the office that I'm more willing not to say push a patient off. I'm just willing to say that if I have tests that I've known over the years that could be really, really informative to the patient when they know it, they heal better like to know. And that's what I think that when you like I've watched many of your videos and you talked about some tests that are very advanced for like SIBO and some that are testing for, you know, small intestinal issues and yeast eczema. Um, 
when you have those kind of tests come to you, there's always new advancements. Like that's what I love. And I think people uh, out there that are listening right now need to know that there's hope because a lot of people get stuck in this rut and they hear that there's only this one way of testing this or this way because many testing now can miss it, but the new advancements have reached it. Um, keeping on top of that, like with Parsley, uh, you must have keep your nose in like research all the time. How is your research live? What is that like? Well, yeah, we do. We do. Well, luckily I'm not alone. Uh, there are over 50 clinicians, doctors, nurse practitioners uh, on the platform. And so we, and we all work together. Everybody works just for Parsley and we're always evaluating new tests, right? So there's new genetic testing on the market all the time. There's new gut health and microbiome testing all the time. There's new hormone testing all the time. And our job is to evaluate that, those tests for you, for our patients, so that you're not out there. There's a lot of sort of direct to consumer stuff. And what I find is people don't, they order these tests online and then they have no idea how to do them or what they mean or why they're spending money on them. And my answer to that is, you know, get a doctor who's trained in these tests because you don't want to waste your money. You don't want to waste your time and you don't want to take a test and get a result and then be like, well, cool. I now know I have this thing. Now, what do I do with it? Uh, and so we're the people who tell you what to do with it. And so the, the patients that are coming to us from around the country really fall into two categories. Uh, they fall into the category of people who have a diagnosed chronic condition. It could be a GI illness like Crohn's or IBS. It could be infertility or PCOS or menopause. It could be an autoimmune disease. Uh, it could be depression, anxiety, and they know they have that and they're seeing specialists and they're spending a lot of money and they're getting nowhere. The other group of people that comes to us are the people who are like, I know something's going on, but I don't know what it's what I call feel like crap syndrome, FLC. <laughs> Um, and oh. they're spending money on supplements and weird programs and direct to consumer tests. And they don't, they don't think maybe I have a disease or I don't know if I have a disease, but they're just like, tell me what's going on. And in both cases, the kinds of more advanced testing that you're talking about, especially when it's kind of the doctor version of those tests, as opposed to the buy them yourself kind of version of the tests mm -hmm. can be so powerful in helping identify the real reason somebody is feeling terrible and why they feel like crap or why they have an autoimmune condition or why they can't get pregnant. You know, I think of all of the women we've helped identify an underlying thyroid issue that got missed, which was why they were having miscarriages or why they were unable to conceive. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, why are we not proactively testing? So at Parsley, we don't believe in fancy tests for fancy tests sake. It's not about racking up a bunch of bills and a zillion tests. We really want to personalize your care, figure out which tests you need that's going to give us an understanding of what's going on inside your body in a way that's really data-driven. And then we can use that to help you get better. I, I think that everybody out there hearing it, when you say data-driven is uh, many times, I think people could get come through the ringer when they come to us and they get, have all that information. I, I agree completely when somebody has gotten all their genetics tested and unfortunately, I'm not putting anyone down, but when they go to a doctor or something and they say, well, this is what you got. And then they don't really get that, like you say, the explanation. Um, and then finally you can get some input. Uh, the light goes on and people have inspiration. And I think that's what I see like drives your, your page. I, I mean, really like it's inspiring to people and, Inspiration to me is uh, what will heal people the most. And when you have somebody come in, because I know people are going to be like, how do I get a number? What, what can I do to come in? Now, the protocol is like when they come in, they mm -hmm. do the history and they fill out forms and such. Do you guys have like a, a board of examiners or anything? I'm not I don't want you to have to get too technical or try to, you know, pull too much out of you. But like, do they have somebody that analyzes it and say or they run it through a data system and they say, OK, this is the route we're going to start with. How would that procedure go? Yeah. So everything happens online. Uh, you sign up online, you schedule your visit with your doctor online and you fill out our intake online. And our intake is very special. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people say that they feel more seen by the parsley intake questionnaire than they do by like their boyfriend or girlfriend, which I think is hilarious, but <laughs> we really go deep and we want to know your life story because the story of your health is the story of your life. I need to know whether or not you were born C-section and if you had digestive issues as a kid, or if you were on a lot of antibiotics as a kid, or maybe your just digestive issues or your emotional issues started in high school and what was happening in your family at that time. Uh, oftentimes 
people are suffering on average for chronic illness, particularly women Mm -hmm. for seven years before they get help. That's what we see over and over again, because people are told by our healthcare system, don't come in until the wheels fall off the wagon and we shouldn't be waiting that long. And so we do this really in-depth intake that's all automated, all online. And then when you meet with your doctor, your doctor who is live with you online, or if you're in New York or LA where we do have clinics, you can come in person if you want. Mm -hmm. But either way, it's the same experience. It's meeting with somebody who's deep diving into all that information you gave and then coming up with a personalized plan for you. And we have, like you said, I love that you know, protocols. We have something called Parsley Wikipedia, (laughs) which is (laughs) In, in Parsleypedia, we call it for short, which is internal to us, where we've really documented all of our protocols and everything's evidence based, uh, you know, and but we're really the first to standardize some of the things that are happening in holistic medicine. And, we, and then we cover every base. So we start with nutrition because food is the first medicine. And then we'll cover medications because like I say, we'll say again and again, medications are an important piece of the puzzle for a lot of people. And that's great. We will cover supplements. Sometimes professional grade supplements are important. Sometimes they're not personalize that too. Don't just take all the stuff under the kitchen sink, please people. (laughs) And we look at how you're managing stress and your emotional health, right? Drinking wine and watching TV are going to lead to a very different outcome than gardening and walking and doing yoga. So I need to know how you're living your life. I need to know what your relationships are like. And we address all of that. And then we have health coaches on our team who also meet with you over video uh, and can really help you make those changes. Because at the end of the day, and you know this because you're a doc and you prescribe plans and you give people instructions Mm -hmm. and you tell them what to do. And you're like, I know the answer. I'm going to help this person. I'm going to help change their life. I'm sure that's run through your mind. And once or twice, maybe once. um, And when that happens, You and I both know that at the end of the day, we can tell people what to do all day, but if they don't go home and do it and feel empowered and like they understand and they have a plan and supported and making those changes, then it doesn't matter what our plan was. They're not going to get better. And so the whole Parsley system is designed to help you keep making changes and we celebrate progress over perfection. So it's not about go home, do all this stuff, get perfect tomorrow. It's about, we're all here in this life to make progress. Let's help you make some progress when it comes to your health. Oh, I love progress over perfection. I love how, uh, when I was reading some of the um, the bio and reading uh, things on your, um, on your protocols that you can see that, um, things are geared for prevention, not just quote, eliminating this out of your life, but these are things that are geared to help you prevent these things down the road. And, uh, the natural progression for most patients, you're right. When you think as a doc, you think, well, I'm going to try to see how fast I can get this done. And now my mindset as I've gotten older in the profession, is like maybe I'm the 60 or 70% guy, maybe I'm the guy that can get you, you know, this to this point, but also it's such a congruent thing that I know that through years that other individuals, other doctors need to be a part of this, like to see this person through the whole thing. And it, and I think it's great because when you have this collective, you have the doctors, you have yourself, you have the health coaches, it not only gives all this knowledge in one place, but it can take pressure off individuals as well. And, and, and when I say connectivity, do you ever find this doc, like when you say you have these people that do, or had the health coaches doing videos consistently and people just want to be seen. They just want to know that what they feel is real and you can give them explanations. And um, that's the progressive that when I see people get better is that you just stay involved with their lives. And, and that's one piece I see at Parsi that I really, really love to see. Thank you. Yeah. You got to stay on it, right? It's like anything in life. You don't, unfortunately for me, you don't get in shape by going to the gym one time, Um, which, you know, I've tried going once a year to see if I get in shape that way. It didn't work out for me. So um, I think we can all say that and I'll know that, you know, ultimately health has to be part of our every day. And we aren't taught that, right? We learn how to brush our teeth. We learn how to tie our shoes. We teach kids to read and write. We do not teach anyone, I don't care where you're from, east or west, north or south, I don't care what your background is, what your you know education level is, how much money you have. We do not teach anyone how to take care of their bodies and generate health. Mm-hmm. And then we sit here and we wonder, why is our population so sick? Why does everybody feel so tired and anxious and burned out mm-hmm. and they're gaining weight and they have blood sugar problems and they have headaches and they have joint pain and they can't get pregnant and they're spending $60,000 on IVF, right? Like 
this whole thing is happening. And part of the solution, not all, but part of the solution is how do we help you be the driver of your own health every day? But like you said, it takes consistency, it takes time, and it takes patience a little bit uh, to be on that journey because health is a journey. It's not just something that you arrive at one day. Yeah, I, I think that um, I, whenever um, time comes where uh, patients can start to view that the doctor and the group sees that life's the journey, like that's the one thing I would say that uh, they not only do they um, accept that this person is really there to care for me, but they realize that the, the whole time leading up to this this whole event um, has created it has taken a long time. And when you can comfort the person and say, yeah, it may take you a little while to get out of this. Um, to me, that's probably one of the biggest health goals that I can see accomplished as a practitioner. It's not about like, how fast can I get you done? It's like, can you see that this will take a journey, really? And when I was talking to Dr. Axe about the interview, like, he, you know, Josh, he's always, he loves what we talk about food. We like, we talk about, you know, hormones and diet and the standard American diet. And you said, you're right. 90, 95%, 99% is like what we put in our bodies is what's produced. Now I don't want to shift gears too much, but I love like your, your clinic, but I'm saying, do you guys see like predominantly, or I know it's all over, you know, across the board, you have many things, but is there um, like a subject. I know we talk. We want, I want to talk about some gut stuff. I want to talk about some hormonal stuff. But do you see predominantly like a lot of gut um, issues in your clinic or infertility? Is there like a, a higher majority that comes into your clinic? Yep. Uh, the three things we see the most, uh, and they're connected, so it's not surprising, are gut health issues, GI issues, mental health, and hormones. And those things are all talking to each other. We see quite a bit of autoimmune too. We see quite a bit of blood sugar and heart health, the things that every, you know, those things are everywhere. A lot of people have issues with those things, but um, gut health and mental health and uh, hormone balance imbalances. And that hormone stuff is mostly women, sometimes men too, but mostly women and hormones is like, you've seen as the range, right? It starts with PMS and irregular periods. Then you get your PCOS and your endometriosis and your infertility. And then you walk your way all the way up to menopause. Um, right. So, uh, we really take care of the whole journey of female hormones and, um, and the reason is we don't just do one thing because in our paradigm, and, and I know you share some of this, the whole body is an ecosystem, your gut and your brain and your hormones and your immune system are all connected. So no matter what you come to us for day one, we're going to do tests and try to understand how the whole system is functioning, mm -hmm. because I can't tell you, you know, my patient who had asthma, who was actually allergic to dairy. And when we took away a certain food, her asthma went away and she got off of $10,000 worth of drugs a year because of a food she was eating, right? But no one had done that right test. So the problem wasn't in her lungs, it was in her gut. Now that said, we can definitely deep dive on gut health and hormone health because these are the things that I see so many people, particularly women, but again, men too, everybody is suffering with and they're suffering for years before they get help. Yes. I, when you see like hormonal health, how it's so associated with um, digestive issues, um, you say like insulin resistance and pre-diabetics. And I, I know you guys see this even in the office. I, I do a lot of congruency with like a good medical team here in town. And uh, many times like in Chinese medicine, what I, I'll find is I'll find very weak kidneys and very weak livers and uh, coming from like a diet that includes, you know, certain types of food. And you're right, like many times individuals will come in and they'll have a symptom. For all of you guys out there listening, you'll have a symptom in a certain area. And, you know, a person who does the right type of testing will come in and say, well, it's not really what you just thought. It's really, you know, your digestive tract. And the association, even in Eastern medicine, with how much digestion would create things such as eczema, I read in psoriasis and uh, chronic ear infections. Um, when you see this, um, the person come in with the standard American diet, and do you start off uh, with like doing a blood test or, you know, a, an allergy test, or do you uh, to tell them to start stop taking things immediately? Or I know it's at the judgment of the doctor, but is that yeah. something you guys sort of uh, work with at the very beginning? Yes, absolutely. I mean, let's take hormones, for example, because it's a great example, right? We blame our hormones for everything. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times 
I have acne and I think it's my hormones. I have this, it's my hormones, my hormones, my hormones are off. Um, and hormones get blamed for lots of things. Uh, and we don't actually in conventional medicine, we don't test them enough. So when somebody comes in and says, I think it's my hormones, we take a big step back and we say, well, what's going on with your hormones and some of the earliest signs and the period female period is a vital sign we see it being off is irregular periods absent periods really painful periods and believe it or not that can be a blood sugar issue so one of the things that we do day one with every patient is we're looking really in depth at blood sugar and we're also looking at female hormones like estrogen and progesterone and testosterone but we're also looking at hormones like thyroid and adrenal hormones and we do that day one when we hear it's my hormones, because a lot of times it's actually something else or the sex hormones. So that therefore the menstrual cycle is showing us that something's off in the body. So thank you, vital sign for showing me that something is off, but the thing that is off takes a little bit more deeper investigation. And the number one cause today actually of irregular periods and some of these hormone imbalances that we all hear about is actually blood sugar. And so most people eat about 17 teaspoons of sugar a day, wow. uh, the American average. And that is way, 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 way too much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in all of our foods. It's in all of our processed foods and packaged foods and sodas and drinks. And we don't even realize how much sugar we're intaking on a daily basis because sometimes it's not in sweet things. It might be in bread or muffins or pastas or crackers uh, or chips. All of those things are actually just sugar in disguise, sugar covered with a Halloween costume called salt. And when people eat these things, they are messing with their blood sugar, then their insulin, and then their insulin messes with their downstream hormones. And that's when you see the it's my hormones red flag. Yeah. And so that's really, that's those patients are really exciting for me, uh, honestly because sometimes the unlock is really fast. Mm -hmm. Like whenever, you know, insulin is so important. I, I agree. I, I think that many times when I first started, you know, checking out hormones and stuff back when I started doing labs, uh, when I started doing that a few years ago, um, I was really, really surprised that you're right. I love like you said that you can use the vital signs, the estrogen, testosterone, all those are indicators of something else that could be going on. And you know, the ideas of insulin resistance and getting your fasting insulin levels read. A lot of people say, well, my blood sugar is fine. I'm like you need to go get your insulin levels checked too. And the the evidence out there, anybody out there that's suffering from hormone issues, you know, with check your insulin levels. Also, you know, because the ideas of glycation and how much like glucose is in everything. Um, do, have we found like not only like it screws up hormones, uh, but it also affects the way, well, it is hormone and neurotransmitter, but also affects the way people think. So many times people come in and say, well, I have hormonal issues. It's hormonal. And then they go, I'm totally depepressed. And I, I don't know if any individual out there, many individuals out there realize how much what you eat, you think. I always used to tell myself that, you know, like you eat this and you expect to think properly. I was like, that's not going to happen. Um, when you see these things, like when individuals will start to blame their hormones, um, the light must come on whenever you're t teaching these things about their brain and their brain activity. Do you see that? I know you see it a lot, but can you add day in and day out? The number one um, medical code that we put in our system for our patient population is anxiety. Oh, and when I talk to other providers, integrative, functional, holistic, conventional providers, anxiety, burnout, depression, chronic fatigue, insomnia, these things are rampant. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of women, you know, women are two to three more times likely to be diagnosed with depression or anxiety as men. And part of that, I think is because men don't often raise their hand as early as women to get help, but it's also because women are more predisposed. Mm -hmm. And so we have this, uh, health system that does that ignores that warning light, right? It's like the warning light in your car and you're like, nah, I can probably get away with not taking this to the garage for a little bit longer because I don't really want to spend the money or deal with this. Mm -hmm. But just like your menstrual cycle is a vital sign, your mood is a vital sign and brain fog, burnout, depression, anxiety, low mood, feeling tired all the time. These are the red flags from your body. They're not little inconveniences. They're your body sending you a message. Mm. And oftentimes what I see underneath that is a physical cause of that emotional or mental state. Yeah. 
And that's really important for people to recognize because what what we've lost a little bit in medicine is the physical drivers of our mental health, the mental, emotional, well-being. Mm -hmm. We have genetics, we have trauma, we have life adversity, right? There's a million other reasons that are very valid and true to not feel great mentally or emotionally. However, if you were dealing with depression, anxiety, burnout, fatigue, it's like trying to climb Everest. And if you are not dealing with what's happening in your body, you're not even at base camp. And so a lot of times what we do at Parsley is we really help people identify there's a thyroid issue. One in five women in our life will be diagnosed with a thyroid condition. Low thyroid, thyroid equals depression, fatigue, and weight gain. I can't tell you how many of our patients we find were put on an antidepressant that isn't working because they have a thyroid condition nobody treated or identified in the first place. Uh, these feelings can be driven by a thyroid issue, a blood sugar issue, inflammation, um, changes in the microbes or the bacteria in your gut, which we know are a big part of our immune health and also drive brain health. Uh, they can be driven by poor diet leading to sort of low grade inflammation in the brain. And so what I describe our work there is, is like cleanup crew. We're doing the tests. And we're doing the physical cleanup that helps somebody get to base camp so that they even have a shot at climbing Everest. And I can't tell you how many psychologists and psychiatrists have written me emails and written our doctors and our team emails and notes saying, you know, yeah, I went to med school or whatever, but I forgot that I could do all these tests and you identified this underlying issue. Yes. <laughs> and I've been talking to this person every week for six years and nobody got anywhere. And now we have identified that they have, you wow. know, insulin resistance and a thyroid issue. And I'm like, I'm like <laughs> you went to the same school I did, dude, like, come on. Um, but we've really sort of separated these two camps so much that we've forgotten that the physical drives the mental. Uh, and that's really gratifying too, because these problems, especially in the wake of the pandemic are really, uh, really rampant and, and really affecting all of us. There's no shame in it, right? This is, this is life today. Everyone kind of has yeah. like crap syndrome a little bit. So I, I, I agree. I think when um, at times when you think about the physical um, aspects of like a bad diet causing microbial imbalance or uh, liver detoxification or methylation within the liver and in Chinese medicine, right? They'll, I know you've, you've read these things and talked about with your patients, like in Chinese medicine, they'll say, well, you can get angry if your liver is congested. I'm like a physical consumption of too much wine or too much <laughs> sugar. Yeah. And make you angry. And they're like, you know, and we know it's like, cause it can trigger certain genetics within you. So I'm like, I know all these other things can cause this, but you know, eating this can create that. So when individuals come to Parsley Health Clinic and the one thing that, I, that they need to know, like I'm just reiterating what you just said is like, you're going to yeah. get your gut floor checked if it's suspected. You're going to get your hormones checked. You're going to get different aspects of the physicality to see if it's actually contributing. Because you know as well as I do, Doc, sometimes it's it's amazing to me where I think I'm smart. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get all this stuff done. They go get a really good test or something like that. And they go, oh, yeah, they uh, told me I should stop eating corn. And then <laughs> all of their symptoms go away. And then I'm like, should have checked corn. Should have got that out of the way, like that physical consumption. So I think it's refreshing to individuals out there to know that there's this virtual, um, this platform out there. Now, um, with hormonal health and you seeing these things come in and uh, psychologists are calling you, I know that you say infertility. Uh, for the folks out there that has infertility issues as well, um, I know you've seen people like having babies and and, and uh, all fertility issues resolved. Now, how big of that part of the practice is it now? Like you get more people coming in for that. I know it's probably already been there, but has it been a big part? It's, it's skyrocketing, honestly, because, you know, in a good way, we have a lot more fertility services out there, which I think is awesome. And we have a lot more awareness that there's things you can do about fertility at the same time. Um, fact is that say people are waiting later to have kids. I'm an example of that. I'm pregnant with my third, I'm 40 years old. Um, <laughs> I'm you don't look 40 at all. Wow. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I had all my kids after 35 or will have had them. And, uh, you know, the simple fact is that on average across the country, no matter who you are, where you live, people are having babies later. And then in addition to that, 
because of all these blood sugar issues, there's a lot more female hormone imbalances and a lot more people are having trouble getting pregnant. And what's happening is that no one is looking under the hood and saying, why can't you get pregnant? Mm. It's kind of zero to a referral for, you know, freeze your eggs or IVF. And again, all of that I'm super supportive of. However, what I want to see if there's any women listening to this, watching this, or, um, you're, a, you're a mom and your daughter's in her twenties or thirties, and you're a partner, whoever you are, when you think you're thinking about getting pregnant, take that year before you want to get pregnant and get your house in order, mm. get your blood sugar checked, get your thyroid checked, get your genetics checked around MTHFR and things that can increase your risk of miscarriage, get your nutrient levels checked. And so what we see is a lot more people now aware of this and they're coming to Parsley for what I call pre-fertility conception help. Yeah. Uh, and which is awesome because they're getting ahead of it and they're saying, you know what, maybe I'm going to need pre- to get help getting pregnant. Maybe I'm not, but you know, my mom had trouble getting pregnant or I have uh, irregular periods and I, my doctor told me it was going to be hard or I have endometriosis and my doctor told me it was going to be hard. I have a patient, she had a history of thyroid cancer and she was on thyroid replacement hormone. She had PCOS irregular. She only got her period like once every three months. And her GYN was like, you're never getting pregnant without IVF through parsley and our work together. We were able to help balance her system such that she's on baby three now, totally naturally. And where that doesn't work, then you can say, you know what, I'm in tip top shape to go address my fertility in another way. And so my message to all of you out there is just get ahead of your health when it comes to fertility, because it can make all the difference in the world and it can save you so much time and money later. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that, you know, just today women deserve to know that and they, no one tells them. Truly. And I think there could be, I'm asking doc, like, uh, when uh, an individual can't get pregnant, uh, there could be sometimes self-blame or feeling shame about not being able to get pregnant and not having that, what you just said, uh, the prerequisites to get your body strong. Because in Chinese medicine, we talk about building qi, building the electrical activity of certain organs to help you house a baby. And, and uh, you know, it's not even taught in our normal health field out there that you go, no, you know, if you're, you know, if you've been on birth control or if you've been t- preventing and stuff like that, to get your body ramped up and ready for something, it's never taught really. And so to me, it's, it's enlightening to hear that. And so any of you out there that's heard this, that it, there's no shame in it. And you know, like there's hope with this. Um, I think that uh, when we say prevention, when we read your website, guys, everybody out there, it is about um, building strength and preventing. And I think that even when I, I saw your section um, about pregnancy and also about chronic diseases, the thing that I see at Parsley is that they utilize that you know they're not going to overutilize too many supplements they're not going to overutilize things that could actually congest the body but you know build energy and build strength um to that's naturally in your platform which i really love and such about building strength and um do you guys um with like herbals and supplements like with infertility there are there a few like uh it's a lot of supplements i know you can talk about but do, or, or herbals but do you have any like herbals that josh would always dr ax would always say like what's your favorites do you have any things that are really good for um for infertility or you've seen work really well for them you know it, i have this foundational starter kit that is like you you know back to you've got to sort of get your body strong right you're not going to grow go grow a garden in a parking lot so good. I you, love these. These are great. I gotta, yeah. You got to kind of like till the field a little bit and put some nutrients in there and some fertilizer and stuff, a little water, a little sun. Um, it turns out a lot of things in the human body get solved with sunshine and, and, and water um, and sleep. So, you know, we'll evaluate your sleep. We'll evaluate your stress levels, chronic stress, high stress, and puts you in fight or flight mode, which is your sympathetic overdrive. Uh, which really can cause also imbalances in your hormones and make it harder for your body to sustain that pregnancy. Um, You know, I'm talking about women a lot here. Also men go get checked because we have a lot of uh, lower sperm counts and and sperm motility issues that are going on. And so sometimes um, I also see people sort of spend too long looking at lady problems and and not look at the other side of the equation. Um, So that's my little flag for that. But, you know, um, to your point on supplements, I have a starter kit and the starter kit's really about 
how do we give the body the right ingredients? Because we largely don't get them in our, again, our SAD, our standard American diet. Mm -hmm. um, number one is methylated B vitamins. So B12 and methylated folate, because this is the best, most active form of B vitamins and flag to all out there. A lot of prenatals don't have the right type of B vitamins that your body can actually use for you and baby. So make sure you're getting a methylated prenatal or methylated B vitamin, because that helps your body energize, detoxify, uh, and is critical for baby's development. Mm -hmm. The second one is our vitamin D3, which help regulate, helps regulate our immune system. So I recommend everybody get 5,000 international units is how they talk, call it, uh, but 5,000 a day and get tested because most of us are not walking around naked in the sun all day, unless you're very lucky and you live that kind of lifestyle. Um, but I don't, I live in New York city and I'm indoors all day and I have sunscreen and clothes on. So at the end of the day, I don't get enough sun. So I need to support my vitamin D really big immune regulator and also important for baby's bones and teeth later. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is omega threes. We should be getting a lot more omega three fatty acids. These fats are what build our brains. They're what soothe our immune system. They actually contribute to better mood. They lower inflammation and we get way too much vegetable oil, vegetable oils called omega sixes and we don't get enough omega threes. So I usually start people on that. And then sometimes a probiotic, cause just like you've got this garden in your whole body that you want to tend to, you've got a garden in your gut and that is your microbes. And a lot of times our microbes are kind of, you know, we've grown a few weeds in there because we're eating too much sugar or drinking too much alcohol or the way that we live. So um, that's kind of the starter kit. And um, at the end of the day, high quality, don't buy the random stuff on the grocery store shelves, please get them from a licensed provider and that's a really great starting point. And then when you ask about herbals and stuff, we're really big here on less is more. We don't like to throw the kitchen sink on people. Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll really do testing to say like, like if you have a blood sugar issue, I'm going to work with you on diet and blood sugar. I'm not going to give you an herbal supplement to regulate mm -hmm. your period because that's a waste of everybody's time. Right. So I, I like to talk about the foundational stuff because it's relevant to everyone. Those are my favorite supplements. I, I appreciate that too. When you say like um, the straight foundations and um, whenever an individual comes to me, I always say, let's start with a minimal amount. And uh, energetically, when we're talking about uh, one more thing we can talk about, I know we, our time is going away from us, but energetically, when you, the body has enough energy to actually tear apart the supplement, if you can feed the body enough nutrients to actually give it energy, but then there's been, you're right, people are thrown so many supplements. And especially like if it's infertility, your body may not have the energy to actually metabolize all the herbals or something. And, and nothing against herbals, but too many can be too many. But you're right, the standard basis uh, that most people are deficient in is something that um, I think is uh, very encouraging to people to say, like, I don't have to take so many things right off the bat. I'm like, no, you just need a basic standard care in that aspect. So can they find that on your website? That that's Yep. Parsleyhealth.com slash store. It has our, uh, we don't offer a ton of supplements there, but we have kind of our core basics. We have the starter kit I talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our daily dose multivitamin, our omega-3s, our probiotic and our vitamin D. These are the things that I take every day. Well, right now I'm taking our prenatal because I'm pregnant, but uh, when I'm not pregnant, I take uh, our daily dose multi, which has methylated bees in it too. For my genetics, that works best, but it's really great for pretty much everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love what you said, like it, I'm a real big fan of, you know, fix it with food first. Mm -hmm. So where we can start with cleaning up our diet, that's really where you get the most bang for your buck. And then if your cells are tired because your body's inflamed, you have too much oxidative stress, you don't have enough B vitamins to make your serotonin and your dopamine, you've got all this inflammation that's slowing down your cells dumping on a whole bunch of other supplements is not going to work so well for you. You've got to like fix the field first. And so it's just food is really a big starting place for us at Parsley. And then we'll start with some supplements. And then what I love to see is the body beginning to heal itself and correct things on its own. Yeah. And then where we can add to that sometimes an herbal is, you know, a, a medical grade herbal is appropriate. Um, and we might add that on, but my goal is like, if we don't have to, we're actually really proud of our data. We reduce overall prescription drugs by over 30% for our folks with chronic illness. And what? it's really gratifying because, you know, we've seen tens of thousands of patients and 
we're lowering, we're probably one of the few doctors, we are doctors. So we like our prescription pads, just like (laughs) all doctors tend to like them. Right. But we are really proud of the fact that we're actually reducing the numbers of prescription drugs people are on. And I would say the same adage goes with supplements. We might start somebody on supplements at the beginning because we're trying to help heal the system. But my dream for all of our patients is that longer term as things heal, they're only on a couple things that are really important for maintaining that good health. They're not like on a boatload of supplements. I, I think that when guys, all you out there listening, it's, it's really great that uh, as she's talking about, like giving the field of proper nutrients to start to have strength to grow and it, reading it through your website, you guys can see a really great pattern is like they encourage the body to actually strengthen up with what they eat. Also, when they say if something is maybe a little bit um, offhand, you can also get your genetics tested and see if like if you're not methylating well, if you can't absorb vitamin D. And even I love this about the gut health is that you are very specific about certain types of probiotics, like not every single probiotic is not really great for everybody. Maybe one is for that particular type, you know, for like QNH pylori. So that's the avenue that I see with Parsley Healthcare that sets it apart. And for anybody out there listening, please check out her website, check out her personal feed, um, Dr. Burson. Okay, so let us know what is your, your, your feed on Instagram? What is your feed for Parsley on Instagram? Let everybody know. Parsley Health, that's where you can find us, parsleyhealth.com. Uh, and then it's Parsley Health on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and all the things. Um, I'm Robin Burson, MD, and uh, on all the things. And please sign up for our newsletter on Parsley's website. One, it's free. Two, Uh, We have tons and tons of guides and articles that really walk you through all of this and give you places to get started, recipes and other things. So if you're not sure, am I ready for medical care? Do I want to see a doctor? All of those are valid feelings, questions, you know, cool. Uh, Sign up for our newsletter because we, we try to boil a lot of this down into news you can use and that is accessible to people. Accessibility is a really big goal of ours. And then If you are looking for membership, um, we have a membership model. It's $175 a month. And I always just like to explain that that includes all your visits with your doctor, all your visits with your health coach, Mm. and unlimited messaging with us 365 days a year. And the reason we structure it like that is because we really want to form this ongoing relationship with you so that we can really help you heal over time. Again, progress over perfection. Health is a journey. Mm. And that fee, you can get reimbursed by your insurance. And it's all inclusive. There's no uh, co-pays for our visits or anything um, with that. So um, I know some people are saying, say, hey, I'm not used to paying, you know, out of pocket for a medical service, Mm -hmm. uh, which is also totally valid. But the kind of time with the provider we offer in this more holistic approach that we've discussed today Mm -hmm. uh, is pretty different than what you're getting in that 15 minute visit that I was trained to do in my training here in New York long ago. So uh, we invite you all to sign up and to, and to follow us, but also just to, again, sign up for the free newsletter and learn because I'm a big believer in starting with yourself and taking that first step forward in your health, you know, for yourself. And I think you can make a lot of progress. Oh, knowledge is key. I mean, it's basically holistic health healthcare on a virtual standpoint. Check her out in New York and LA if you guys need to go out there. But Doc, it has been such a pleasure talking to you. Really a pleasure meeting you. And um, thank you for your message. Thank you for putting it out there. Um, and I know that you have to go. I know it's it's a, it's a, going to be a busy day. Same here. But again, thanks for guys listening to the Dr. Josh Axe podcast. Thankful to our guest, Dr. Robin Burzen. And guys, check her out. And I'm Dr. Motley. We'll talk soon. Thanks, everyone. See you. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.